ask you just quickly about your NASCAR uh, little moment there, um, <laughs> because this is an interesting thing, again, about, um, again, what your experience was, the way you grew up, the success you had already achieved in, this again, this is predating Trans Am though, just to go back a second. So you get this call from Humpy Wheeler, who's this big promoter, and he wants to put you in a race. And clearly, um, Humpy Wheeler is you know, a showman, and so we know why he wants to elevate, and there's a great big story around if you were gonna be racing in a car, but he obviously also knew that you were capable. He wouldn't have put you in if, it, if you were gonna fail behind the wheel. So he obviously was interested in seeing what you could do on the track. But when you get there, and this is for a race uh, at Talladega. No, this was- Oh no, the second one's Talladega. Uh, I Daytona. was introduced at Talladega. Right. He, they brought me to Talladega to introduce um, some of the two, the teams, and Bill France, uh, senior at the time. I was going to race Charlotte World 600. World, so yes. Right. How surprised were you at the reaction of people in the garages and the fans? Because you had a reaction from both. And were, how much did it surprise you? Because you're already a talented guy behind the wheel. I was, um, usually if I know someone is trying to get at me, mm -hmm. I'll try to get it back at them. Right. And I, 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 I was expecting sort of this, but you know, when I was walking through the paddock and guys were spitting at my feet, right. literally spitting. What year again is this? This is so 78, I 78, believe, yeah. 78. Yeah. Yep. And um, I thought, well, all right, as long as it doesn't hit my shoes, I, I'm, but. But it's amazing, all those little things, if, if not this, if not, like, it's all these same, like, concessions you're making with yourself. And again, no one else in the garages has to deal with any of this. So you're just, um, in addition to having to be a racing driver, you're carrying this, like, heavy, wet blanket of well, all of Ned this. Well, and Ned Jarrett. All was, the time. Was walking me around and yeah. doing introductions. And, right. So I was getting sort of pissed off, but I wasn't showing it. So um, uh, I, um, he brings me into Bill France Sr.'s office. And at that time, it was uh, double wide. Mm -hmm. That's where their office was. Right. So we walk into the office, and he introduced me to Bill. He says, well, well, Willie, uh, good to meet you. Welcome, welcome to uh, NASCAR. I said, uh, thank you. He said, oh, you've been following. He said, you've been running those little uh, formula cars. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, what made you think you're going to come down here and run? I said, well, I, just the challenge. Who's your favorite driver? I said, uh, well, Jody Schechter. <laughs> Why did I say <laughs> Jody Schechter? That yeah, you know that boy from Formula One. He came down here in the IROC series and scared the shit out of Richard Petty. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Right. Oh, he said he 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 thought I don't know what he or how he how he drove like that, but he drove that car sideways all the way the whole way around the track and running up high up against Buddy Baker. <laughs> And, and I was trying not to laugh. I said, yeah, Joe, he's, you know, he runs on the edge, right? So afterwards, uh, the day of the race, because right. I was there for two days, yep. Ned Jarrett takes me into the driver's meeting, and those guys looked at me, man, like. Really? Yeah, oh, oh, they looked at me oh. like, uh, you're out of place, boy, Ugh. right? And I could feel it, right? So I thought, okay, you guys want to have something to <laughs> gripe about? I'm going to give you something. So Bill Gazaway was the chief steward. And so right at towards the end of the meeting, he says, um, now, anybody, any, he was a really mean man. I'm a card-carrying member. You all, but you all know about oh, card that, carrying members. That means, yes. Uh, K K K. Right. <laughs> so he <laughs> he gets ready in the meeting. Anybody got any questions? So I held up my hand. Those guys' heads. <laughs> the driver's like, 
I said, um, can you pass on the grass? Oh, <laughs> Daryl Waltrip, <laughs> Daryl <Darryl> Waltrip <laughs> dropped his head. I said, I said the pit lane is narrow. I said it's so narrow that these guys are really running into each other when they come out. I said, can you go out on the grass, put two wheels? Gazaway's face went bright red. Best thing for you to do, boy, is just wait your <laughs> turn. <laughs> and every all the drivers were like, they were like shocked. Right, right. That that was headline news yes. back in NASCAR. Can you pass on the grass? They still today. They still yeah, they still talk they, about it and ask the question. They still talk about yeah, it. Yeah, like you yeah, pass on the yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah, right. That was the end. That's amazing. Uh, Humpy Wheeler got a call. Yep. And said. Hey, he's going home. Get get him out of town. <laughs> yeah, Willie needs to leave. Death threats, death threats were coming in. Yeah, right. Letters, letters were coming in. And what I liked about the letters, yeah, is they couldn't spell cat. No. K a t c t a. But they could spell the N word perfect every time. <laughs> that got spelled perfect. <laughs> Every right, time. Right. I mean, there was a couple where there was just one G. I said, well, you well know, that's a country. That's a country. Right? <laughs> yep. But I, but you still get the context. So, oh, my gosh. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about Indianapolis, another place you went to. IndyCar, Indy 500. Um, 1985, so well <laughs> with this uh, NASCAR thing behind you, you're now coming off of your Trans Am success. You would like to take a stab at being in the Indy 500. So in 1985, you try to put a drive together, but you had no testing. Your chief mechanic wouldn't speak to you. And ultimately, you withdrew, and you were crucified in the press. This is another thing I can relate to with you. I've had a similar experience. But you came back, and the pivotal year was 1991 with Derek Walker. And the environment was completely different. Derek was a supporter, and he believed in you. Rick Mears even gave you advice. And everyone knew your talent by now. So do you think, what was it about 1985? Was it, it was the team? Was it too early? Had you not earned enough stripes yet? Or was it just that group of people and the car wasn't going to work? Was there was it? just no communication. Yeah. And I don't think the guy who the crew chief was, Big Naughty was overseeing it, but a guy named Leffler, who was a dirt track mm -hmm. sprint guy. Right. And uh, I knew right from the very start he it was not he did not want me in the car right I knew it and I don't think he understood that I knew enough about the sport to know what what was wrong what was wrong yeah and so Jim Truman called me that day yeah. when we were on break and he says you need to leave Indianapolis yep he says I'm getting some phone calls you need to leave Indianapolis Truman oh my gosh need some phone calls yep Oh my gosh. And uh, so I left, the, the press crucified me for leaving. Mm -hmm. the, the, oh, the dinner, the lunch menu at the track was chicken and ribs. Do you think that was a coincidence? They, no, 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 they created it. God. Yeah, so, all right, I went back and started, and when I did it that year, I was winning every Trans Am. Mm -hmm. So I went back, finished off the season, and then in 1986, I got a call from a, another stock car team owner, and we did three races, and, out of, and then he was out of money. Right. And, but right. what put him out of money is the engine builder was deliberately detonating the engines. But was it because of you? Yes. Okay, and so were there a few times in your career where people have specifically told you this is why? No question about it. You could it. figure it out, I exactly. I knew it, and, 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 and- the fact that these sponsors weren't calling, I mean, between Jim Truman and Paul Newman, like the calls still were not coming. Like you had these people helping, but then it still never led to the momentum that it, it should have based on your talent. Well, the, probably the call that took me, not probably, the call that took me back to the Indianapolis in 1991, it was from Bill Cosby. Right. It was right. Bill Cosby. Yeah. 
And, Who had money. And, prior, and in between 86 and 91, I was raised for Dan Gurney. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, his engine builder is here in the audience uh, by the name of Gary Meyer. And, um, and we were like, we were, it was a manufacturer's championship. Yep. It was Toyota versus Chevrolet versus Ford. Yep. And Gern, Dan Gurney, without a doubt, was the best team owner I ever had, hands down. Yep. He was a legend as a driver yeah. and as a team owner and a builder. Yep. Race, Bobby Unser raced for him. Right. Right. Great Swede Savage. Those great drivers that raced for him. Plus he won. Yes. In Formula One. Right. Only driver in history only American in history to win in his own car. Oh, yeah, his own car. He's an amazing yeah. engineer. Yeah. So, um, right at the end of the 86, I, I called Gurney. I said, I'd like to race for you. He says, let's play it by ear. Well, during testing, at the end of 1986, one of his drivers got hurt, Dennis Ozzie. Mm -hmm. Gurney called me up and says, I want you to come in the car. So, Racing for Dan, he is all business, mm -hmm. right? Yep. He's fun to be with. Now, you want to party with somebody? Gurney's the greatest to party with. Right. But when it's, when it's race time, he's... Yeah. This. So my very first test in the car in 87 was at Riverside, California, before they tore, got rid of the track. So went out. Chris Cord was testing one car, I was testing another. Very first time, come in at the end of the day, and we're in the conference room, just like this, with these kind of right. chairs, and Phil Remington's in there, the great Phil Remington, and, and, uh, and the chief engineers. So there's about eight of us in a room, and note takers and all right. that. What do you think of the car? What, what's your overpression, Willie T? I don't like it. <laughs> That's what I said. Right, right. I said, I don't like it. Right. And it, I got that NASCAR look, driver's uh -oh. meeting look again, like, you know. I said, I said, I, I said, I'm glad we're testing here. I said, we got a couple of slow corners, but we got some really fast corners, mm -hmm. these fast S's. I said, the way, the, the way you've got the, the, the spring rate and, and shocks and bars, I don't like. I said, the thing is flopping over at high speed and the transition is using up time. You gotta stay on top of it. I said, instead of running um, hard springs and soft bars, I want the opposite. Yep. I want soft springs and hard and stiffer bars to keep mm -hmm. that platform level. Mm -hmm. So, they're taking notes, I, I said, for the next test, that's what I'd like. Right. And Gurney looks at me and he says, well, if it doesn't work, it's on you. That's what he did. We went out, we were almost two seconds faster wow. right away. That's awesome. We won the very first race with that setup. And then we went on and won the Manufacturers Championship. And after that, anything I asked for from Got Dan, right. Dan would say, Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So 1991, back to Indy, qualifying. You're with Derek Walker that time. So you have a much better, you've got the Bill Cosby money. Um, but qualifying, as we say, the month of, month of May is always, can always be a challenge depending on the team, the setup, all of the ingredients. And any, as you say, anything can happen in 10 miles. Because qualifying for Indi Indianapolis, you may know, it's four laps, it's 10 miles. Anything can happen in 10 miles. So when you finally qualified, Indianapolis Motor Speedway erupts into cheers. And I think the thing that a lot of people know, or if you don't know, you should know, qualifying is the climbing the mountain. Like, and not everybody even gets to be in the race. And depending on the year, there are, you know, it's, only, it's always capped at 33. Sometimes there could be 40 or more cars trying to, you know, to, to get one of those 33 spots. And some of them go home even before qualifying. But 1991, it all comes together, and you're with Derek Walker. And you finally qualify in 1991 to become the first black man to qualify at the Indy 500. And there's been two. Yes. 
was it? George Mack was George, yes. back in 06, I think. And then you come down a pit lane and everyone is cheering to the point where the other teams are coming out to congratulate you and high five you because everybody knew that historic moment and what it meant. Um, Joey Ray was there, famous, former racer, African-American, and he congratulated you and said, you did it. But you said, no, we did it.